Hello, this is Lepidopterus Creations. This is my first ever video, so thank you for tuning in and helping to support a growing channel. And this is also going to be my first video in the Caterpillar Raising series. Now, I'm usually a year-round raiser. I buy plants from nurseries, kits, all that kind of stuff. But this year, for the summer and the fall, I'm going to be focusing on one specific type and documenting it here. So first off, the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need some sort of cage. It doesn't have to be like this. It can be anything just as long as there's at least three times the amount of space of the caterpillar. If you have a one inch long caterpillar, you'd need about a three inch long space. And make sure that it has enough height for the chrysalis. Most chrysalides are about this big, so an inch, two inches. So at least two inches of space up top. Next you're going to need a positive attitude. It can sometimes be disheartening to know that there's diseases going around this year, or that your caterpillars have even been infected themselves, or a slew of other things that can happen to the caterpillars. However, you need to stay positive. Even if all of them seem like they're getting sick, make sure that you still pay attention to the ones that seem healthy enough. Even separate them if you have to, but always make sure that you don't give up. Yeah! You'll also need time and patience. They're not very consuming. It's not like a dog where you have to take them out a few times a day and feed them. However, you do still have some responsibilities. Giving them their host plants, misting the cage if it's warm, and making sure that they're getting enough sunshine and air. You'll also need their host plant. This is a milkweed leaf. It can feed monarchs, queens, and a bunch of other ones. It's probably one of the most well-known host plants for caterpillars because monarchs are the most well-known butterfly, at least in North America where I am. Make sure you have an ample supply. I'd say that about one full-grown plant can feed two caterpillars. Yeah, you're gonna need a lot. Next, make sure you actually have your caterpillar. Make sure that there's no way that they can escape their cage. This is especially difficult when they're tiny because they can just slip through almost every hole. But as long as you keep a close eye on them in the first couple of days after they hatch out of the egg, you should be okay. If you're a first time raiser and you're not raising them from a painted lady kit or something like that, I'd suggest starting with no more than three caterpillars. That way you'll only need about a 12 inch space for them, since caterpillars do need an extra inch per extra caterpillar. Mm, I just said extra and caterpillar twice in one sentence, yeah. And you'll need something to clean them. Not the caterpillars themselves, but the cage. You'll need to clean out frass, which is another word for caterpillar poop, and any of the leaf matter or leaf juice that gets on the side. And if there's excess water, like you misted it too much, you'll need to wipe that off as you don't want mold growing. That can kill your caterpillars, and I'm guessing you don't want that. And finally, you can even have a little name tag. This is optional, and I just did this because I wanted to make sure I knew what I named them. Last time, I only remembered the names out of two of them and not the other one, so I just kept switching its name around and it got too confusing. So we've got Cinderpelt and Kit. Cinderpelt is from Warrior Cats, and I just like the name Kit. Well, either way, whether or not you choose to follow this guide or choose to follow my series, I hope that you have a good day. Like and subscribe, and goodbye.